back in space. I know, our old stomping grounds. I'm so excited for this week. I know, we're going to see some small producers making some unbelievable products. I know, travel through the country, head north. But before we go, we've got one day here in Madrid. It is Sunday. What are we going to do? There's only one thing to do. La Latina. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. vermouth. Wine. Ham. Beer. Cheese. <laughs> Just like what we love about Wisconsin. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Especially on Sunday mornings in Spain. It's an aperitif you usually would have before lunch, so people would stop, come by here and have a vermouth, a bite of food before going on to lunch, where they'll have beer or wine. So it's the base is wine, but then they add in extra uh, herbs and uh, a lot of herbal components to it. So a lot of bars also have it on tap. It flows really quickly then. <laughs> Ah, yeah. Riquísimo. Yeah. Bueno, toma. ¿Eh? Es jamón ibérico. Ibérico. Extreme, extrema dura. Lo haya porque es guapa. A ti que eres feo, no, ¿eh? I can do it because I'm pretty, but you're ugly. Sí, señor. Ya la corta ya. Ya. Ah, ya. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Another exciting part of this trip is we have a group from Wisconsin that's going to travel through Spain with us. We're going to go meet them for dinner now. Okay, so we're going to go to Cerveceria La Fabrica, and it's just a traditional Spanish cerveceria, which means a place where you serve beer, but they also serve wine. And uh, we're going to have some marisco or seafood. <laughs> Uh, langostinos is a, a big shrimp, if you will, and what's best to do is to <laughs> decapitate it. <laughs> and then uh, what a lot of people do in Spain is they actually suck the brains Show us. out. Show us. It's really, it's actually quite good. It's salty, a little sweet, um, and um, just uh, an interesting texture. <laughs> and one more thing that's kind of fun about Spain is that um, when you're using napkins, you're welcome to just throw them on the floor. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's interesting. When I first came here, Spaniards are very proud about being Spanish, and they, they really want to show you everything, and I feel like I am taking on that role to an extent of sharing my passion of everything Spanish with our group from Wisconsin. And I want to show them everything. I want to tell them all about everything we see and eat and drink. And I, um, yeah, I think my second home is Spain. So our next stop is El Lacon, um, and this is a traditional taberna, which is a tavern, and we're going to be trying some berenjena, which is eggplant. We're going to be having some uh, asparagus, and then two wines from Bierzo, which is in the northwest part of Spain. We have a red and a white, a godello and a mencia. Oh, perdón. <laughs> Muy bien. Gracias. And so this is mejiones. This is, these are mussels. And then this is cayao, which is a, basically a stew of um, garbanzo beans and intestines. This isn't what we've ordered. It just comes with a drink. So go ahead and... Yeah. Oh my god, that was special. That's good, right? So get the spongy, soft, tomatoey, peppery. Let's not craft macaroni and cheese. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Boyardee. <laughs>
today is all about the pig. I know, my favorite thing. I know. So here we are at Simon Martin, yep. which is in a tiny little town in western Spain. Yeah, 6,000 inhabitants, all directly or indirectly involved in the production of ham. One of two towns in Spain that are considered the best. And in this town, they're the best. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a fourth generation, uh, been here for over 100 years. I think they know what they're doing. They do. They won best ham in the world a couple years ago. So I think they're going to teach us a thing or two. Well, let's go learn something. Let's do it. Okay. Bueno, bienvenidos a Guijuelo. Gracias. Welcome. Y bienvenidos a Simón Martín, una empresa centenaria, ubicada en un pueblo, en una ciudad, bueno, en una villa con tan solo 6.000 habitantes. Eh, una villa con tan solo 6.000 habitantes y donde toda la población, de una forma directa o indirecta, vive de la industria del cerdo. Todo este proceso hay que pensar que desde que el cerdo mmm, muere, se sacrifica, tienen que pasar como mínimo tres años para poder vender jamones y paletas. Vamos a ir tocando ya otro tipo de temas porque después de la ducha, okay. que hablamos antes, aquí es donde suben los jamones. Y Guijuelo se encuentra así rodeado de tres sierras. Al lado donde yo señalo con mi... al lado de izquierdo tendríamos la Sierra de Francia. Okay. Y de frente tenemos la Sierra de Béjar y la Sierra de Agredos. Eso va a permitir que donde estamos, que es un secadero natural, natural, con el aire de las distintas sierras, estos jamones y paletas se vayan curando. Okay. Sin nada más. Segovia, the home of the aqueduct from the first century, but the also Alcazar, Alcazar. But more importantly, yeah, what's the most important thing? The here? suckling pig. Yeah. So in the restaurante de Jose Maria, one of the best of the world, and Jose Maria is the owner and the superstar behind making suckling pig. Yep, and he's actually going to be our host today, which is really exciting. He's going to make us dessert, show us how it's all done, and show you how to cut a suckling pig. Well, let's go in and uh, meet Jose Maria and see how he makes the pigs and enjoy some fabulous food and wine. It takes great pleasure for me to introduce you to Jose Maria, the king of Cochinilla. What a great dessert. So this is, this is the, the typical menu that shows you the, the best things of Segovia culminating in, in the suckling pig. Whatever re religion you are, if you come to Segovia and you don't taste the, the, the suckling pig of Jose Maria, you have to go to church and confess. <laughs> it's the, the cultural heritage of the city. It's the most important dish of Segovia. And there's a ritual that you have to cut it and slice it with a plate. Porque está muy tierno. It's a method of demonstrating how Start perfectly the roasted it is and how uh, tender it is. Tienen que cortarle de rabo oreja. So here we are in the estate of one of the most interesting men in Spain in the wine world. This man is known as the King of Tempranillo, and Tempranillo is the king grape in Spain. So we're really with a legend, a living legend in Spain. And today we're going to meet with him, we're going to see this particular estate. He has four estates, but this is probably one of the biggest at 2,000 acres. It's got everything. Um, as you can see, we're surrounded by vines, almost entirely tempranillo. We're in the, the beginning of the, the season, so the vines are just starting to bud. When you uh, look at these vines, they, they have the baby grapes, you can see here. 
but as you can see the vines themselves are fairly uh, thick. What that indicates is, is the age of the vine. So I'm not sure, but I would say these are probably anywhere from 15 to 25 years old. Ya verás cuando comáis como te cambiamos de cara todo. He said, you're looking a bit serious, but wait until you've got some food and drink. Yeah. 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 Alejandro viene aquí todos los días, ¿no? Yo todos los días, no. Vengo, todo, sí, sí, sábado y domingo seguro. Entre, cinco, entre cinco, semana. Seis a la semana, fácil. Sí. Most days this is where Alejandro starts the, starts the day. Yo me levanto a las seis de la mañana todos los días, es curioso. He gets at six o'clock every day and uh, most days the first place he comes is here. Sí, sí. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Al ataque. Al ataque. ¿Y para acá? Con naturalidad. No le duele la cabeza con mi vino, ¿eh? And by the way, Nadia just just so you, if you, in case you're wondering how much you should drink at lunchtime, he guarantees you will never have a headache from drinking his wine, however okay. much you drink. <laughs> Sheep's milk cheese is integral to the Spanish cuisine, and we're here at Vicente Pastor to meet Felix, who's a seventh-generation shepherd. Twenty-five years ago, he and his brothers decided to take the sheep's milk and start making artisanal cheese. Felix is extremely passionate about what he does. And we're going to go in and learn a little bit more about sheep's milk cheese. Is this a design of yours? Okay. So I said the design is just really pretty. It's just pretty to look at, and he said it's their own design. Sí. It's almost got a floral, like like como flores. Sí, claro. Sí, sí. Porque es un mold así muy floral. Sí. So he said it's a really floral mold. Vamos por allá, por aquí. So just this month, it'll be 25 years ago that he and his brothers decided to go from being the seventh generation of shepherds of, of sheep to actually uh, not only making sheep's milk but making sheep's cheese. Perfecto. Muchísimas gracias por todo. Yo voy a comer más. Yeah. Muy bien. Today we are in Nevada, which is in the northeast part of Spain and it's well known for its agriculture. So it's uh, earned the name Jardín de España, which is the Garden of Spain. And today we'll be picking the iconic white asparagus, something uh, Spanish, unique to the Spanish cuisine, and we'll learn how they make their asparagus white. Okay, eh, la planta del espárrago es como si fuera una... ¿Cómo se dice? El, el, la fregona, ¿sabes la fregona? El... Sí, sí, sí like un uh, mop. Mop, yeah, like ¿Eh? mop. Un mop, ¿eh? que se mete dentro y son garras, y se va haciendo grande, ¿vale? Ok. So the asparagus plant you put down and it's, he's saying it's like a mop and it's the, la, las raíces. Sí, las raíces. The, the, the roots spread out like a mop would. If you pull them out of the ground at that moment, then you're going to have white asparagus because they haven't been in the sun to get the chlorophyll and then but if you let them grow keep growing like this then you have green asparagus this is an organic um, they don't put any fertilizer or anything like that only natural things to help grow so they have less production than a conventional asparagus farm would 
pero la calidad y el sabor, que luego lo veremos, es excepcional. Sí, pero la calidad y el sabor, que veremos luego por nosotros, es fenomenal. El mejor. El mejor, sorry. Así que vamos a ir a Different regions eat in Spain eat different asparagus. So in Barcelona and Catalonia, they eat green asparagus, and here they eat white asparagus. And that it's starting to become a bit more popular, even in countries like Germany, to eat white asparagus and harvest it while it's still white. Okay, so we are on our way to an amazing dinner. Um, we're gonna have a tasting menu at a restaurant called Venta Moncalvillo. It is the restaurant that has a Michelin star in the smallest village in the world. So that's pretty exciting. And then the owners of the restaurant are two brothers. One is the sommelier and the other one's the chef. How are you? Fine. Good. Oh, it's beautiful. This is our vegetable garden. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, So they have five different gardens according to the season. So he's saying the important thing is that the cook or the chef can come out, grab what he needs in the moment, and just return to the kitchen and cook with it. Right now we're in the, the spring season, so you're going to find on the menu a lot of artichokes, peas, asparagus. In the summer you're going to find um, vegetables marinated and really focusing on the, the fresh vegetables of the season. Um, in the fall it's the season of the mushroom and then in the winter since we're in the mountain um, it's really just uh, game animals is the main focus of the menu. Very seasonal, very of the moment, using those four menus to, to dictate what season they're in. And 80% um, of the ingredients that they use on the menu comes from basically right here in this area. He said that they've had offers to create other restaurants not in Madrid, but also outside of Spain in England and Arabic countries. He said that doesn't make any sense because you can't move what they have here. You can't move the garden, the surroundings, the mountains. And so you couldn't have another one of these restaurants anywhere else in the world. If they went somewhere else, they'd have to adapt to where they were and their surroundings and their products and ingredients of where they ended up being. So it doesn't make sense to replicate this restaurant anywhere else. I was just telling them that we brought some um, great cheeses and salamis from Wisconsin to share with them. Eso es un uh, queso cheddar de 10 años. So this is um, from Landmark Creamery Anabasque, which is uh, sheep's milk bath style. Next, really uh, Dunbar and Blue, um, which is an English style cheddar with strains of blue cheese hand injected. Uplands Farm Pleasant Ridge Reserve. Y al final, uh, the last one, uh, Leclerc Farms Martone, which is a soft um, cows and goat uh, milk cheese. Y después, a ver, ¿qué piensan eso? Chorizo es estilo español. So a Spanish style of chorizo from Underground Meats. We'll see what they think about this one, since they are, we are in the land of chorizo. Chorizo en Rioja es la cuna del chorizo. Mm -hmm. y Es una cosa muy local, muy local. O sea, no sabía que en otras partes del mundo se hacía chorizo. Yeah. So he's saying where we are in La Rioja is basically the birthplace of chorizo. And he says it's surprising because he didn't think people did it in other parts of the world that made it. So. Yo me como esto y me bebo una botella de vino. Okay. <laughs> de la especia que tiene. Muy bien. Um, he said he eats that and he's going to drink a whole bottle of wine for <laughs> the spices that it has. This is the end of uh, a lot of fun and uh, many adventures and personalities that we've seen um, 
We hope you've enjoyed uh, enjoyed the journey with us. Um, so, uh, Ego Nun, Basque for good morning. And Euskal Eria, welcome to the Basque country. Before I started doing this, I was a lawyer, I was a banker, I worked for the phone company, and I spent all my time dreaming of when I could get on vacation to go and drink wine and travel through Spain and places like it. And then one day I woke up and I thought life was too short. I listened to the voice in my shoulder and I said, I need to do this for other people and I need to do it for myself. For me, quite simply, this is my life's work. I'm Jeremy Shaw. I'm the managing director and founder of Iberian Wine Tours. We run wine and gastronomic tours around Spain and Portugal and South America, focusing on the best gastronomy and wine that we can find for our clients to go and visit across the Iberian Peninsula and beyond. A classic tour we do is we start in Madrid. We meet in Madrid, we start with a tapas tour and we make our way day by day from the, the capital of Spain in Madrid to the Basque Coast where we are now. In my uh, opinion, when I started out this business, there were some incredible experiences to be had that nobody was actually exploiting. And I think also we thought we'd have a lot of fun doing it. We always have. I think when I first came to Spain, it happened to me and we like to make it happen for other people. You walk into a town that in some instances hasn't changed for hundreds of years. What you're eating, what you're drinking, the way that you're approaching your meal is no different from what was done 400 years ago. So literally time stands still. Oh, yeah. That's really good. The food, the wine, the way that you consume it is nothing like modern day society and yet it's fabulous. The, the flavors, the approach to the produce that you create, the way that you are proud of the individual specialities from your region and the way that you eat it and the way that you drink it and the way that you celebrate it is unique. And so when people have this lunch that goes on for hours, it feels like it goes on for days, when they go home, it's one of the things people write to me most often about and say, heaven, I miss the lunches. When they sit down at a desk and eat a sandwich and they think, I wish I was in Spain again, sitting down with the winemaker and not knowing which day it was. This is what the experience is. After two or three days, people completely immerse themselves in it, embrace it, and then they get lost in it, and they don't want to go home. So we are at a cider house in Navarra where cider is a traditional drink. It's made from apples, as well as in the Basque country. would like to thank the following underwriters for their support. Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board and the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin. Illing Company. Outpost Natural Foods Co-op. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Society Insurance. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. WMSC 91.7 FM. Wisconsin Milk Marketing Board, representing the dairy farm families of Wisconsin, who fostered a proud history with generations of family-owned dairy farms, working to sustain the state's economy through job growth and providing acclaimed cheeses and other dairy products. Every product tells a story, and every story starts with a seed. Your story, your product, your company all started with an idea. Illing Company ensures you have the right packaging to help you proudly take your harvest to market. Illing Company is dedicated to packaging your vision.